Hi, welcome to a video episode of Paul Tom Power, Power System Design's podcast on the latest in power and power design. I'm your host, Alex Paul, and today I've got Andreas Volker. He's with Power Integrations, and we're here at their test facility here in Enns, Germany. Hi, welcome to the show. Yeah, thank you very much, Alex. Well, Andreas, um, the whole issue of power and power test, power is such a critical infrastructure, but it can't, you can't just slap it in. It has to be qualified. It has to be designed in. It's not just something that you can take off the shelf and throw in. Right. Uh, in particular, when we are dealing here with high power, even considering that our products are actually coming from the low power domain, uh, we have to be very cautious uh, where we are get going into an application with, with our products, because if something has happened, then maybe it's not the word everybody would not like to hear, but then it really blows up. Yeah, well, catastrophic failure is a challenging sounding term. <laughs> exactly, and uh, nobody would like to see it. Of course, it's fun in the laboratory if you have from time to time a boom, but uh, frankly speaking, nobody would like to see this in the real world. Uh, just imagine in a wind uh, power application or a traction application, in particular traction, if you're running on a train, you don't want to be interrupted on your journey simply because there's some catastrophic failure on the devices. Well, and not to mention, in a, in a train, you're talking public safety, health, everything. Exactly. And that's why uh, we also have this facility established to be yeah, on the safe side. It's not only the qualification of the product, which is anyway a standard uh, task, uh, but we are also investigation abnormal conditions so that we can be safe that under considerable normal and abnormal conditions, our products are operating within the specification, but also having enough safety margin so that people can really go with high confidence level in the application. Well, and that's so interesting that you're working with low power technologies to drive high power applications. It's such a huge dichotomy in power levels. Right. Uh, you have to imagine the microcontroller working with 3.5, uh, 3.3 to 5 volts and the actual dieseling voltages where the power models are connected to are going up to 4.5 kilovolts, even sometimes up to 10,000 volts. And we are actually the link in between. And you, we're talking several orders of magnitude here. I mean, we're talking about literally almost no power at all at the board level to you're literally moving mountains on the other hand. Yes, correct. And this is actually the challenge that we have to deal with this, yeah, let's say, different domains. So we have to provide, uh, besides the insulation, which is, of course, totally essential to separate this high voltage domain, but we also have to be very precise with uh, the timing with the temperature characteristics, just imagine something goes wrong. Then we're coming back to this catastrophic events which nobody would like to see. There you go. Now, Andreas, without going into anything proprietary here, what are the types of tests you do perform here? Uh, actually, we can do all sorts of tests, starting with standard low voltage tests, which are focusing on temperature drifts, focusing on timing characteristics. Uh, then we can go to the next higher step, means single and double pulse test on the high voltage level over the entire voltage and current range, including uh, protective measurements like short circuit events. But we can also go into real inverter tests. We have ring inverter here, where we can uh, apply voltages up to 4,500 volts and current up to uh, 1,500 amps. So uh, that we are not only having, let's say, this traditional double pulse qualification, but also application realistic uh, kind of yeah, characterization, uh, characterizations and testings. The closer you can get to real-world conditions, the better the device is going to perform in the real world, right? Yeah, besides this, also it gives more confidence not only to us, but also to our customers. This is true. You see a nice test result and say, ha-ha, I know it'll function at least in that application space in that way. Exactly. It's always better to test prior you go to the market and not using the market as a test facility. So this is what we want to bring into our lab. Well, you know, and that's funny because you'd think the engineering community, I mean, they are engineers, there would be a much deeper acceptance of test both before, during, and after development. Right, so what we are, for example, issuing for our reference designs, for instance, besides, let's say, the normal data sheets, uh, we are also providing complete test reports, including the low voltage, high voltage, and inverter test characterizations. Very nice. Now, um, we had had a different conversation with uh, one of your other executives from the facility, and we talked a little bit about your customer base, but can you give us a, a little bit more of an, of an insight into like, the kind of problems people come to you with? Uh, there are different kind of problems. Uh, for instance, customer, for instance, is using our gate drivers already in their system, and they're facing whatever kind of problem, and uh, also for whatever kind of reason they cannot solve it, then they are turning to us, and uh, 
for instance, if you cannot give uh, support directly on the telephone or by email, even if you can go to the customer, maybe they are lacking certain equipment for the investigations, then they are invited to come with their system to our facility so that we have a closer look, not on the system level, but really going into the details, particularly to the gate driver and to the IGBT switching characteristics. And that's a lot of help because a lot of people really do know about 90% of what they need to know and it's that last 10%. Yes, exactly, uh, because also our experience is most of the customers know very well the software and the system, but the gate driver is a kind of a black box. So it's simply I put something in, I expect something comes out, and yeah, but what's going on inside and how this is interfacing with the actual application is not always known. Now, Andreas, uh, can you give us an example of, just an anecdote of some, something that came in recently that surprised you? You're like, wow, I didn't expect it to turn out this way. Um, yeah, one example is, for instance, we had um, developed a gate driver and the gate driver was tested according to the normal test protocols and then we had is an issue with this actually in the field because we have seen that there was a different PWM pulse pattern applied to this one which was not wrong but simply different because for certain reasons the customer needed this one. And uh, yeah, here we actually spent quite a lot of time, means roughly one month, to investigate really into the electronics, into every piece of the system, what is the actual root cause, where does it come from, and what are the countermeasures. And eventually we were able then to solve the problem, and now the system is running and in the field. And that's a very excellent point, because a lot of people don't even really think about that and that's digital, so a lot of people go, well, digital is perfect and everything's going to work fine. But it's just a co control protocol. No, the problem is uh, the controller gives you something digital, but uh, we are working actually in the end with an analog world. And the transition from the digital to the analog uh, is quite complicated. We have to consider EMI issues like the IDTs, like the VDTs. We have to consider the mechanical routings, which is influencing how much of this EMI is catched up again by the system. So it's not black and white. It's a very complicated issue in the end. Well, and that's exactly it. Well, that's one of the things I love saying to my audience because power engineering is truly an art between the analog and the digital because you can't, you can't just simply make one solution that fits everything because the analog world is a very complicated place. Uh, that's true. Nevertheless, our aim is to provide as much as possible as a standard solution to a Bench or to a bunch of applications. Of course, there are limitations. We cannot have one solution fits all, but our aim is really to make it as most as possible that we can use same solutions for different applications. Got it. Got it. Well, that makes all the sense in the world. Now, unfortunately, this is a podcast. And we don't have a lot of time, but one thing I always let my guests do is have the last word. So it can be a little bit more about the facility or about power integrations or just a tip for our audience, but the floor is yours. Yeah, um, actually what I would like to say is, uh, because I've seen in the past that not so many students are interested anymore in power electronics, uh, I never really got it why, but I really like to um, yeah, encourage people to really go into power electronics because it's much more than simply putting wires together, but it's a real spectrum of different applications from the tiny washing machine up to tractions, so it's a real bunch of excitement in the end. I agree with you completely. I love power electronics myself. So thank you so much for coming on the show, Andreas. Thank you very much for the opportunity. And I'd like to thank all of you for taking the time to be with us because we wouldn't be here without you. Tell your friends. This is Alex Palt for Palt on Power. Have a great day. <laughs>